I quickly wanted to show how I'm going to model a pulley for one of these 28 BYJ-48 stepper motors. I've already brought up a little diagram that I just googled the dimensions of, um, looks pretty good. These are the ones we're interested in which is the shaft, so it's a 5mm shaft uh, that's flattened down to 3mm uh, and the flattened bit is 6mm deep and then the shaft protrudes out by 10mm but only 8.5mm uh, are the shaft, there's a little bit that sticks out that's part of the, um, I guess it's got a bushing uh, there, so uh, I'm going to be doing this in um, open SCAD which is parametric so I'm just going to make some notes, the shaft that's all of my shaft information that I need I think, I'll hang on to that link for now. So, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to first of all I'm going to model the shaft and then I'm going to invert that. Um, so we'll start with the cylinder and we'll give it a height of uh, 2.5. We'll give our R1, which is the radius at the bottom, 2.5, and our R2, which is the radius at the top, also 2.5. Center equals false. And that's going to be the bottom bit of the shaft. It doesn't look very good at the moment, so we'll change the um, the number of vertices around the edge to 100. Press F5, run that again. Looks much more like a circle now. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. Uh, and then on top of this, we actually have another bit of a cylinder. So essentially, this bit of the cylinder is the the bottom bit that doesn't have the flat on it and then we need to translate up um, 0, 0, 0.0, by this by the height of this we need to translate up then we have another cylinder which is going to be the rest of it so here I'm going to draw it as uh, a 2mm cylinder just so you can see it on the on this map and the height of that will be uh, 6 mil, so it'll look like that and this is where we have the flat bits so to do the flat bits we are going to do uh, an intersection between the cylinder and then I'm also going to draw a uh, cube we want the cube to be uh, 3mm and then I'm just going to 10mm and then 6mm high so you can see it's intersected it but it's intersected in the wrong place so we need to translate on that and we're going to need to move it uh, minus 1.5 5 0 There we go. So now we have a shaft with two flat bits. Now, uh, this original cylinder, I made it two point. I made it two two millimeters. So I'll take it back up to two point five. So this essentially is the shaft that comes out of the motor that we need to attach onto. Which is cool. But obviously, this is the the shaft as it is, and we need to remove this from something else. So uh, we're going to do a difference between the shaft and something else. So I'm just going to draw another cylinder. Uh, and I'm going to make the height of it uh, 5 mil. So now you can see it's cutting it out, so let's make it a bit higher, let's make it 10mm high. It's great, you can see it. Uh, so if you ever get this where it's sort of patchy rendering, if you hit F6 it does a, um, a polygon render, or something like that. 
and you get a much better render output. So that's our shaft into uh, at the moment just a cylinder. So now I want to make this into a pulley. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to make the uh, sort of disc of the pulley bigger. So I am going to I'm going to make it 15.91. Uh, and the reason I'm doing 15.91 is 15.91 times by 2 is 31.82. So basically I want the circumference of this disc to be 100 millimeters. So 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle. So if I want 100 mil, 5 by 2 is 50 is pi r, so 50 divided by pi, 3.14, gives me 15.92. So that means that our disc will now have a circumference of 100 mil, so one rotation will lead to 100 mil of displacement of whatever's wrapped around it which is great. So I'm also going to need to add some flanges to hold on whatever is around the pulley. So I'm going to be using fishing line, but um, yeah, whatever. So basically I'm going to add another cylinder, uh, and I'm going to make the height one, but I'm going to make the radius a bit bigger. Okay, and because I've done it inside a difference, I need to do union. Join them together. There we go. And I need another one at the top. So that is a very basic pulley. So we can do a couple more things to make this a little bit more interesting. We can add a chamfer. Uh, to these bits, so adding chamfers is actually quite simple. So first of all, I'm going to drop these 0.92s off of the flanges. So on top of this, we're going to add these. We're going to translate it by one, 15 to 17. Adds a nice little, you can see here, a nice little chamfer on that, and then we're also going to need to do one at the top. Like so. So there's our two chamfers. And then I'm going to put some holes in this. So I'm going to put four holes in it. So this goes outside of the, I can do it down here, outside of the union. So the union adds these together. The difference takes the first item and subtracts all of the second items and third items, etc. So we can add our holes here to remove them. So F6 takes a little bit longer because uh, it does more work. It's not a quick thing, but there we go. So this is uh, our pulley. Now there is one more thing I should actually add, which is um, a little notch so I can tie the fishing line on. So again, I'm just gonna add it as a removal of a cylinder. Set the radius to 0.5 mil, so a one mil hole should be enough for some fish line to um, go through. Of course, that's the wrong 
location. So we need to be out here. Um, let's stick it at 16, see where that lands it. So you can see it over here, through there, and through there. So there is a trick to avoid this uh, render issue. So for instance, this one, translate here. I'm going to translate it down one millimeter and make the height of it 12 millimeters. And then when you do a quick render, it shows up. Basically, because it cuts through, so this 12 mil cuts through by one mil either side, the 10 mil um, thickness. So you can sort of avoid having to, to re-render the mesh every single time by using this trick. There we go, and we'll do it to this notch as well. So we're at 12, do a minus one. So then you can see it there. And this bit is actually going to be a weak point, so what we'll do is we'll rotate this round from here to either here or here. So you can do that using a rotate, which rotates around the, uh, the axis in the middle. So we'll do a uh, 0, 0, 45. There we go, which moves it around to here because we rotate around the Z axis by 45 degrees. Uh. That's it, got a pulley. And then down here, we have to do the F16 to render this properly, or we could cheat and do the minus one thing. So, all that's left to do now would be to print it and we can do that by exporting the STL which is up here. Now I happen to know my printer um, can't do holes as stipulated or rather my slicer is not set up correctly for doing holes so I actually know that my uh, shaft radiuses will be wrong so I know that it needs an extra quarter of a millimeter as tolerance on the shaft to make it work. So, that would be that. And it's 3.5. Because it needs a quarter of a mil either side. So this hole should get a little bit bigger. But it's gone. And uh, now it's ready for for printing, so I can save that, export the STL, and then print this. So it printed out okay. I've just uh, attached this little motor and I'm running some tests with it, and yeah, seems to be working fine. It's a good little model. Thanks for watching, I hope this has been useful. Remember to like and subscribe if this kind of thing interests you.